Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and we're going to be going over the UFC card for this Saturday from a DFS perspective, and this is going to be the first of two videos dealing with this. First is going to be, this video is going to just take care of who the best plays are, and the second video, probably tomorrow, uh, hopefully tomorrow, is going to be just focused on lineup construction and how to hopefully win that $100,000 for first big lottery, you know, uh, multi, multi-entry tournament. And as you'll see, uh, there's a huge difference in those two videos, especially this week, um, because we have a 10 fight card and a 10 fight card for DFS purposes is very, very difficult uh, to get unique. Um, if you're going to play that tournament where you're trying to fight with, you know, thousands of people for a hundred or two hundred thousand dollar first prize, you're really running the risk of of duplicating lineups with a bunch of people unless you do things that are going to make your lineups really really poor so we'll be going over how to do that uh, in, in another video and in a 10 fight card uh the, the difference between these two videos is going to be even more dramatic uh, it's possible that you know that my six best plays uh from today might end up only two of them uh, on 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 a lot of uh the the gpp lineups that we're going to go over uh tomorrow so uh we'll see and, and that's always my favorite video is the um the lineup construction video because we get to use sabers and we get to use the tools we get to use the sims and and things like that um but today we're going to go through the, the the best plays and let's just cut right to the chase i mean the best play it's it's just not even remotely close uh and it's going to be uh chris gutierrez and, and and the reason for that unfortunately is because they priced him at 7K when he was supposed to be fighting um, uh, Javid Basharat. And he was like a big two to one underdog. But uh, Basharat pulled out of the fight or got hurt or whatever. And so they had to, well, they didn't have to, but thankfully, I guess they found a replacement. Um, and is uh, the replacement is Quang Lei. And you have now Gutierrez is a big, like five to one favorite. And unfortunately, they can't change the salaries. So you have um, Gutierrez as, as probably at least $2,000 mispriced, maybe even $2,400 mispriced. Um, so he's a theoretical lock. Now, listen, there's there's there, there are other things about Gutierrez that doesn't make him a great upside play. I mean, he's a striker. He doesn't have a lot of takedowns. His inside the distance line isn't even that good. It's like plus 200. But unfortunately, at 7K, uh, it doesn't matter. I mean, you just he's just... The good thing is not the good thing is he should be, you know, mathematically like a hundred percent owned or maybe 80 or whatever, but he's not going to be, he's going to be like maybe 65 or 70. Um, I would imagine. So technically if you do lock him in, you are getting over the field. And unfortunately, even if he does win and, and not score a lot, seven K is just such a small price tag. And not only that, but it's just small card. You know, that even if he scores 65, which would bust on 90% of the cards, a 10 fight card, it's just, it's just put such a premium on getting six of six right that it's just going to be very, very difficult to fade him, which is going to make it a very, very tough DFS card um, or tough, tough DFS slate when it comes to trying to get unique. Now, when it comes to cash, you just put him in and, and roll. When it comes to, you know, even three max or 20 max, you probably just put him in and roll. But um, we'll have to talk about what to do in the in the 150 max type buy-ins. Um, now, as long as we're on this fight, I mean, Quang Lee, he's 6,700. Problem with that is, well, okay. The problem with that is he just doesn't win too often, right? He wins like 15, you know, 20% of the time max. And he doesn't really get a high score. But the good thing is, is if you did play him, if somehow you do get a win and he, uh, you know, one of those 20% of the times that he wins, you're going to be getting leverage on all of those lineups that I talked about that have Chris, Chris Gutierrez in them, you know? So uh, we'll talk more about that when it comes to lineup construction tomorrow. But as far as like being a good play, I mean, he just doesn't win often enough at 6,700 to be a good play. So uh, Chris Gutierrez is clearly the lock of the card um, as far as just, you know, best plays. Um, and whether you really want to play him, that's for the later discussion. All right, let's just move on up the list and see what, you know, who you're going to put in these lineups with Chris Gutierrez. 
Um, all right, so let's see if we can't find some upside or some takedown upside or some good inside the distance line for some of these fights. And right off the bat, you have a very just awkward women's fight between Stephanie Luciano and um, and uh, Teresa Allen Carr. And it is striker versus grappler here. They already fought, and, and Allen Carr took her down like a whole bunch of times in the first and second round. Couldn't put, couldn't finish her, couldn't submit her, and, and she completely ran out of gas. And Luciano came back and just kind of just put it on her and got a 10-8 round and, and ended up getting a draw. Um, so they're going to have a rematch here. And the reality is, is that I, I think Alan Carr is probably going to be, I guess, somewhat lower owned for no other reason that like it was a really, really bad look the way that fight finished um, with her just basically surviving. But I mean, the reality is, is that her her method of victory is going to be dependent on getting takedowns. So again, if in fact she does win, I mean, she's going to score well, where it's possible that if Luciano wins by keeping on the feet, she doesn't. So I do think that 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 Alan Carr is the better of these two plays. Luciano, uh, her inside the distance line, I imagine, is going to be pretty poor, as most women fights are. Um, yeah, I mean, plus 325 at her price is really, really poor, so... If anybody here, I think Alan Carr is the preferred uh, is the preferred DFS play. Um, okay, uh, Journal Aaron's versus uh, uh, Yusef Zalal. So Zalal is a full ninety four hundred. Okay, now it's important to realize how hard it is to to pay off ninety four hundred. Um, you know. You need usually a big inside the distance line and, you know, probably and takedowns. Um, and if not takedowns, like a good first round upside. And Zalal really doesn't have that. Okay. Like you look at his results here. First of all, he's had a bunch of losses. Then he came back and he had a draw with, with, uh, with Blackshear. And then he had a good win over, over Billy Q. I mean, two takedowns, full domination. And he had 100 points, but that was like his ceiling. He's never done anything like that in the past. He's a very boring type fighter. And 9,400, I mean, that's a pretty atrocious play at 9,400, I think. I mean, we'll look at the inside the distance line. And what is it here? It's a plus 200? That's terrible. I mean, could he get like a bunch of takedowns and a sub like in his last fight? I guess he could, but... It's a very, very poor inside, a very, very poor DFS play. Um, now, as far as cash goes, again, if you or if you just want to get six of six, now here's the problem. Like if Gutierrez is a lock at 7K, then the rest of your salary can be kind of spent. Like if you play Gutierrez and Allen Carr, then you could play Zalal and you know not worry too much about his upside, I suppose. Um, but as far as just like what's a good play, I mean, this is a very, very poor inside the distance line. You we have to be able to do better than this. All right. Uh, and Aaron's just, again, doesn't really win often enough to be, I don't say viable, but he's plus 300 or not even. Uh, so it's going to be Zalal as the preferred play, but it's not a very strong play. Now we get to Carl Williams versus, um, how do you pronounce it? Jonathan Diaz. I guess, what is Jonathan Denise? And here, here we have some upside, okay? Because Carl Williams... He's not much of a finisher, but he is sure is a DFS scorer because he loves to go for a billion takedowns. He had eight against Breschke, seven against Taffa, you know, and, and that scores tons, you know. And so it doesn't matter if he finishes or not. It's he's almost better off not finishing the opponent. So he's got where all the upside is. I imagine he's going to be the most popular, you know, non-main event fighter on the slate. I can't imagine him not being, well, except for Gutierrez, obviously. Um and he's a, a completely elite play. Now, on the other hand, you have Denise, who you look at his inside the distance line. I mean, first of all, his money line isn't bad compared to some of these other 7K ones. He's only like a plus 170. So he wins a fight often enough to win. Not only that, but his inside the distance line is extremely strong. You know, he's plus 200 for his price. Not to mention the fact that Carl Williams is, is going to be very, very popular. I mean, I think that this is a pretty easy fight to target both sides here. So Carl Williams and uh, what's his name are J Denise are both incredibly good plays. Um, I don't think you can stack this, 
But I want one thing I will say in, in, in a 10 fight card, we really start to have to have the discussion <laughs> of whether we should be stacking these fights. Um, I'll, I'll listen. You know what I mean? On a 10 fight card. And we'll get to a fight that I think is, is kind of prone, prone for that or primed for that. Um, but we shall, uh, we'll, we'll see. But for now, I do promise you that, uh, that, uh, one of these, uh, who, who hit a home run here? Looks like, who is this? Oh, Bowers hit a home run. Is that a pinch hit home run? No, it's not a pinch hit home run. Let me see if that was good for me. Hold on. Let me just see something. I mean, we definitely, I don't think we had Bowers in this lineup. Sorry about this, but I was a uh, kind of, kind of multi, uh, Kind of multitasking over here. One second. Yeah, sorry about this, but I have to see. I'm gonna pull it up over here. Um, yeah, not bad. Game warning track. I don't know if we had Bowers in that one. No, I don't think we did. Okay, you can't you can't get everybody. All right, anyway, sorry. <laughs> uh, I digress. So Carl Williams and jo uh, Jonathan or Denise are both very, very strong plays. And we can move on to the next one, which is uh, Carl Hosa versus Panny Kianza. This cannot possibly be good. Um, Hosa at 8,600. She really doesn't have wrestling. She doesn't really have an inside the distance line. Let's see. Her inside the distance plus 350, that's just terrible. You know, she might have some volume, but her inside the distance line is really poor. It's just a bad DFS play. But again, we're run, we're gonna run out of out of out of options pretty, pretty soon. So we'll 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 see what ends up happening. But uh I'm wanna be greedy and and only make good plays here or only recommend really good plays, and she's just not. Um Again, relative to the slate, only nine, five, 10 fights, then she's obviously a little bit better, but um, it's really not a good call. It was really not a good play. And Panny Kiansad, very, very boring fighter, very sm terrible inside the distance line, plus 1,100. Don't want to play either of them. All right, you have Karalamos Jurugu, I guess, versus Toshihomi Kazama. Uh, this looks like a little money line Vig maybe so so he is minus two fifty as the favorite. Let's look at the and he's only eighty eight hundred. So this is actually some pretty good uh pretty good money line value here. So if you could come if you could pair this with you know a uh a decent inside the distance line, this could end up on a card like this being kind of an elite play. So let's take a look. Um. Gregorio, I guess Gregorio, Gregorio, is that how you pronounce it? Minus 120 inside. Okay, this is extremely strong. Okay. Um, this is one of the better plays. I think this is just as good of a play. Well, I don't know, just as good, but right there with Carl Williams. So if you're building, again, these, you know, cashy lineups, you know, single entry, 20 max, these this lineup is really going to start building itself in a second here. Um, so let's put him in. We already did. Now, the other side of this, you have Kazama. Um, the good thing about the Kazama play is that if he wins, it's probably going to be because he was able to get takedowns, okay? And which means that he's going to score decent. Uh, the problem is, I mean, like I said, that doesn't mean he's not always going to win, but he's going to win about 30, what, percent of the time? Of the times that he wins, how often is he optimal? Uh, is it always? Mm, no, but some of the time. So I think that he's an okay underdog. Um, I also think that Gregorio, because of the things I just said, is probably going to be pretty popular, so you'll get a little bit of leverage if you play Kazama. So yeah, I think Kazama is definitely in there. So Kazama, Gregorio, uh, Gregorio. Uh, both sides of this fight. We already have Carl Williams and Denise, both sides of that fight. So you, you, this is where, you know, the action is going to be, I think. Um, and for good reason. I don't think you're going to need to play Zalal, like, for example. Anyway, uh, let's move on here. We have uh, Gutierrez. Oh, well, we'll get to Gutierrez in a second. We just did. Uh, Yana Santos versus uh, Chelsea Chandler. 
Uh, another woman's fight with a very poor inside the distance line, I think, on both sides. Yeah, I mean, Santos plus 800. Chandler's a little better at plus 300. And, and, and the other thing about Chandler is that she has some, some takedown upside. So of the fighters in this of, of this fight, I mean, I definitely would think that Chandler is the better play and Santos is pretty much unplayable, okay? Because again, you have Chandler, who is, you know, her inside the distance line is better, and her, uh, oh my God, another home run for the Milwaukee. You gotta be kidding me. Um, and her takedown upside is better. So I think she's a very, very strong kind of middling play. Let's come, I mean, let's compare her to Allen Carr, for example. I mean, Chandler's gotta be a better play than Allen Carr because she has similar takedown upside. Actually, I shouldn't say similar. Because Chandler could win without getting the takedowns, where Alan Carr really can't. And that's kind of like a positive for Alan Carr, right? Because all of Alan Carr's wins, or almost all of them, are going to involve high scoring because of takedowns, where Chandler could win by keeping it on the feet. Is that the best way for her to win? No, but there's a, a distribution of results where she can, she could win without getting a big score. So I don't think she's as good of a play. Well... She does have that inside the distance vig that would overcome Alan Carr's, which is like plus 1,200 or something. So I think that she's similar to Alan Carr. How about that? Uh, and Santos, completely unplayable. I mean, again, when I say unplayable, I mean like what are the best plays, you know? In 150 max, I promise you I'm playing all these people, okay? The, the just-in-case vig in the 150 max is very, very real. But in as far as like who the good plays are, 20 max and below, things like that, you don't want to play Santos. Um, all right. This guy you probably do want to play. So Danny Barlow is is minus 400, like for openers. At 9,300. Now, so th this is this is the difference between someone like him and someone like Zalal. So Barlow is a huge favorite like Zalal is. He's very expensive like Z Zalal is. But here's the difference. Like, Barlow, I think, has an inside the distance line of minus 140. Yeah, so his inside the distance line is extremely strong as opposed to Zalal's, who isn't. As a matter of fact, Barlow round one is like under three to one. So he is a very, very strong play. Uh, the only thing is that he doesn't have any takedown upside, whereas opposed, as opposed to, say, uh, Zalal, who could get a bunch of takedowns en route to a finish, which doesn't come as often right? As, as the Barlow. One. So I do think Barlow is definitely a better play than Zalal. And I would play him before Zalal. Would I play him before Carl Williams? Probably not. Okay. But uh, would I play him before Gregorio? Probably not. Um, but I would put him third as far as top favorites go. I mean, I think that's fair. And his opponent, I think just doesn't win often enough. And you don't need any underdogs. I mean, we're getting some good ones already, not to mention Gutierrez. All right. Um, so we already talked about the uh, Gutierrez fight. Now let's, uh, we're down to the last two. And this last, this co-main event is the one that I would consider maybe stacking. Um, just because, okay, so it's a 10 fight card. Oh my God, the Brewers are just mauling them. Uh, it's a 10 fight card. So in a 10 fight card, you consider this. And one thing about this fight, this fight is, could have a lot of events. Okay. And a lot of volume, uh, Mariscal and Damon Jackson, both bring it. They bring the heat. They, they're, they're very active. You'll have Jackson going for a bunch of takedowns, which means there could be takedowns. They could be reversals. They could be retakedowns. They could be knockdowns followed by take, you know, there's all kinds of stuff that could happen en route to kind of like a three round decision fight of the night where both guys score, you know, or, you know, one guy finally gets the third round win after the other guy scored, you know, that you can, you can make an argument to stack this three round fight on this particular card. That's my kind of hot take, I guess, on, on this, on this card. Um, as far as who the best play is from here. Um, I mean, I don't know. Let's take a look. Chepe Mariscal at 9,100. I don't think he's got a great inside the distance line. Let's see. At plus 160. That's not so great at 9,100. 
And certainly Jackson at plus 325 is, well, Jackson plus 325 at his price is actually not bad. And you combine that with the fact that he could be getting a bunch of takedowns. I think that he's a really good play. So I think that both these guys, now that you, you know, you add in the volume and all the other stuff, I think this is the third kind of key fight. Um, uh, the Carl Williams fight we talked about, the Denise fight we talked about, and I think this one as well. If you if you play those three fights and you play Gutierrez and someone in the main, you know, you're going to probably be in good shape. Uh, speaking of which, main event, Marcin Tybura versus Sergey Spivak. I mean, the price is right. You know, 8,300, 7,900, 10 fight card, five rounds to work with. Very difficult fade. Um, both of these fighters have some takedown upside. Both of their inside the distance lines are pretty strong. You just, I mean, this is the other of the, this is the fourth key fight. Um, do I have an opinion on which is better? Sure. I mean, Spivak's got a better inside the distance line. I don't think his takedown upside is any worse than Tybura's. So I think Spivak's the best play. Um, but Tybura is certainly in play. Um, okay. So with that said, I mean, wh what do we got? We have four key fights, right? Or is it five? You have Spivak, Tybura. I'll just put one guy in from each of them. We have Jackson, Mariscal. We have... Gregorio, no, no, no. Um, what's his name? Uh, Carl Williams, Denise, and we have the fourth one, which was who? Uh, I think. Wait, was Mariscal Mariscal fight Williams fight? No, I lost it. I guess Gregorio Kazama. I would consider the fourth one, right? So you play somebody from these four fights, and then you have Gutierrez here. I mean, this builds itself, right? I just put all the four favorites in. So you could you could build lineups like this with like a whole bunch of these those 70 to 800 hour underdogs I talked about. So as I mentioned, 10 fight card, not going to be difficult because of Gutierrez to build good lineups. But everybody on the you know, on on the planet is going to be doing this. So you have to figure out when we get into the lineup construction thing tomorrow how to differentiate yourself in some way. Um and we'll talk about that. But until then, that is the DFS breakdown. And uh, I'll see you guys hopefully tomorrow.